Hi everyone, this is Rebecca with Emergency Special Needs Homeschooling and today we're going to be focusing on shared reading. Once again, I'm with AT for Kids. It's the Assistive Technology Center at Little Tennessee Valley Educational Cooperative in Loudoun, Tennessee, and you can find us at atforkids.com. So before I get started, I just want to check in with you and make sure that you've taken the time to get some fresh air and sun as best you can, even while it's kind of rainy and dreary, and that you've stayed connected with people socially, even though we are physically distancing ourselves. But please call, uh, FaceTime, whatever you do to stay connected with the people that you care about. And do something kind for yourself. You're ca carrying a heavy load right now, trying to work and homeschool, take care of your family. So please do something to take care of yourself. And remember, you're doing the best you can. Just let the rough side drag and you've got this. So what is shared reading? Basically, shared reading is an interactive reading experience between the parent and the child. Interactive is the key. So why is this important? Evidence shows that shared reading will, quote, help improve language, communication, and interact interaction skills while building understanding of print concepts. So what does all that mean? How do you do it? You follow the car. Car is how you're going to remember how to do this. And don't worry, we're going to have some downloadables that you can print off so that you can remember how to do this. So C is for comment. So you're going to read the page, make a comment about it, and wait. And that is going to be the hardest part, the waiting. You've got to wait five to 10 seconds to give your child time to process and come up with a response. The A is for ask for participation. So if you don't get a comment back, you ask. And once again, you have to wait. And the next thing you do is respond. Whether or not they said anything, you still respond and you add a little more. Car, comment, ask, respond. Remember, the goal is to get your child to lead the way by initiating their own comments. So if they're starting to take charge, you're doing something right. So let's dig into the comment part. So when you're reading, take a look at the page and think about what might be interesting to your child or what are you working on right now? Make a simple comment about that. Simple means just a few words. And this isn't a question. This is a comment. Things like, I like it. That's big. They look different. Oh, a cat. And then the hardest part, you have to wait. And it can feel awkward at first, but you'll get used to it. You're giving your child this time and space that they need to process what you're saying and what they're looking at and to come up with their own comment or gesture to let you know what they think about it. Interpret anything they say or do as a comment on the book. Whether or not it is, interpret it that way. There is no wrong answer that they can give. Next, ask for participation. So you've read the page, you've made a comment and waited very patiently and still haven't gotten a response of any kind. So ask for participation. This is where the questions come in. Whereas before you were just making comments, things like, do you like it? Is anything different? Do you see the cat? And then guess what you do? You wait again. Whatever response you get, it is not wrong. This is a no failure activity. Next, you respond. So you've read the page, you've made a comment and waited, asked for participation and waited, and may or may not have gotten a response. What do you do next? Respond as if they have made a response to you, right? And then add a little more. So this would look like, I like it. It looks soft. They all are different colors. I see the cat sleeping on the chair. So now it's time to turn the page. And I mean this literally. Talk about turning the page. 
Part of shared reading is learning print concepts. This means you're going to do things like point out the title of the book, show with your finger that you're reading from left to right and top to bottom. You can do hand over hand or hand under hand to guide your child's hand over the words as you read. Help your child turn the page. And if they have a, a physical disability that makes that difficult, you can use things like page fluffers to make that easier for them. Make sure you're pointing out the pictures as you read. Focus on one word or phrase that is repeated in the book. So what are the best books to use for shared reading? As usual, the best books are what the child enjoys and engages with, but it's also important to expose them to a wide range of books on different topics and in different styles. So some things for you to look for when you're picking out new books. Look for repeated words, phrases, or sentences. Basic sentence patterns. Rhyming songs or poetry. Think about favorite nursery rhymes. Those are overlooked a lot, but those are oldies but goodies for a reason. Uh, books about the alphabet or counting, favorite characters or special interests they might have, and also don't forget nonfiction topics. Complex communication needs. If your child has complex communication needs and uses some sort of low or high tech alternative or augmentative communication system, also known as AAC, you can and should still participate in shared reading with your child. You can use a core vocabulary communication board. And if you're not familiar with core vocabulary, it's just the kind of the basic words that make up the vast majority of what we say every single day. And they're used across situations. Whereas you'll hear about fringe vocabulary, those are specific to an activity. You can also use a special shared reading board, and we're going to have some of these for you to download um, on our website. And you can also use an online resource uh, such as Tar Heel Shared Reader, and it's free. So even if your child does not have this issue and does communicate verbally, um, a communication board is still helpful for shared reading to make the responses easier for them to give. So let's dig into Tar Heel Shared Reader. It is free and will support you with shared reading. So when you log on to Tar Heel Shared Reader, this is what you're going to see. What they have done is take in the library they have of age and ability appropriate books and combine them with a shared reading interface that will support you while you learn how to do shared reading. There's all kinds of resources here if you want to learn more about the process, or you can go right here to THSR interface and it will take you to the Tar Heel Shared Reader. Over here in the upper left-hand corner is the menu where you can find a book or find collections. So if you have a theme going, you can look for a collection of books on that theme. So if we go to find a book, um, I've already searched here for animals because we've been talking about Goodnight Gorilla, right? So let's scroll. And down here, there is a book called The Zoo. That would fit in very nicely with the theme that we were using. Click on it. And it brings up the title page, The Zoo. And down here in the bottom, you can see that there are some communication symbols. Like, want, not. And if you scroll, you get more of those core vocabulary symbols that you can use. Right here is the next to go to the next page. And while you're doing this, go ahead and say, turn the page and click that. The zoo is a fun place to visit. Up here in the corner, there are comments for you to make. So if you're not sure what comments to make, they've provided you with one, two, three different comments that you can make on this page. So feel free to use their suggestions or your own. Their comments are mostly core based. So if you are working on core or using AAC, that's very helpful. So you would read it, 
say your comment, look good, and then wait. And then you would ask your question because you're asking for participation. Do you think the zoo looks good? And then you wait again. And then you would make your response. I think the zoo looks like a fun place to go. go. And there I modeled using the symbols to communicate. Now let's turn the page. So what I want you to do is keep using the visual schedules that you've created and following your new routine. Also go to Tar Heel Shared Reader and practice using the interface or go or and or right or go around your house and find books that you can use to practice shared reading with your child. Think up potential comments for each page and write them down. You can even use post-it notes on the page to remind yourself. This will take the pressure off while you're reading. And remember, you are doing the best you can with what you have in a very difficult situation. You're doing great. You've got this. It's okay. If all you do is follow your schedule and do any kind of reading, I think you're doing great. So for today's activity, today we're going to be talking about the book Sick Simon. For this week, we're going to be talking about germs, the coronavirus pandemic, the importance of washing hands, and social distancing. Basically, we want to explain in understandable terms why we're not at school, why we can't go on play dates with friends, why mom keeps telling me to wash my hands all the time. So go to our website, at4kids.com, for today's activities. And then tomorrow, we're going to continue talking about different types of reading and resources to make that easier and more fun for you. Once again, my name is Rebecca with at for kids We're the Assistive Technology Center at Little Tennessee Valley Educational Cooperative. And you can find us at at4kids.com.